Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika, and this is what you should be watching, okay? <laughs> Have you seen this? Have you seen that? No? Well, go check it out, all right? And thank me later. I am that friend that always tells my friends and families different movies and TV shows that they should be watching, okay? And now that you guys are my YouTube family, I am telling y'all all about it, all right, so y'all can get into it. And so, you know, if this is your first time finding my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome to you. We are glad to have you here. If you like the content that I am giving, please like, share, subscribe if you are so inclined, okay? And you can follow me on social media. My social media links are in the description box. And everything that I tell you guys about that is on my list is also in the description box. Okay. And, you know, this is all genres. Okay. No specific order. But sometimes you may hear me say the categories such as, you know, what I'm currently watching, what's coming soon, soon come, what's in the theaters, what's on the streaming services. You know, if you were under a rock and you missed this, sometimes I give you guys honorable mentions. And I usually end it off if, you know, I have some old school classic favorites. OK, I throw those in there, too. So it's a little bit of everything because I love a little bit of everything. All right. And so let's go ahead and get into it. So number one on my list. All right. It's so funny because I just had the movie to this on my list a couple of weeks back and then had it as one of my old school classics favorites. Some people are not that crazy about the movie, but they like the book and, you know, vice versa. Or they like both like me. All right. But now they decided to make it into a TV series because, of course, everything <laughs> goes from movie to TV or TV to movie at one point or another. Right. And so this number one is Time Traveler's Wife, all right? It's, this came out on May 15th on HBO. You know, as I said, this was already a movie and a book before, okay, you guys? And so it's basically, if you are not familiar with this story, it is Claire Henry. It is a love story about their marriage and the problems that they have in their marriage, okay, with time travel because the husband, Henry, just be traveling all around the place. <laughs> So now I don't know how the show is. I did change my mind and decide that I'm going to check it out. I wasn't too interested in checking it out before, but I get, just figured I would tell you guys about it just in case you are interested. Okay. Number two was also a movie before. Okay. They can't stay, stop doing these remakes, y'all. All right. And so this one is Lincoln Lawyer. This is on Netflix. This came out May 13th. It's basically an idealistic lawyer. OK, Mickey Holler, who runs his practice out of the back of his Lincoln Town car, and he is taking cases both big and small, all right, all throughout Los Angeles. All right. And so, of course, the movie was with Matthew McCartney and now they have a TV show. All right. Number three, I was shocked to see this because I thought we was done with Bosch. All right. If you know about Bosch, Bosch was an original series from Prime. And it was very good, okay? I was sad to see it go. I was like, okay, no more Bosch. But apparently, psych, Bosch is back. All right, with Bosch Legacy. This started on Prime May 6th. Of course, we have Harry Bosch, who embarks on the next chapter in his career and finds himself working with his enemy, okay, or his one-time enemy, Hunley Chandler, y'all, okay? And so, again, I don't know if anybody was watching Bosch before. If you wasn't, you may want to go ahead and give it a check. But it's not something that you had to be watching in order to be able to get into this one. All right. But it is a good show nonetheless. And so we are going to my number four, which is Candy on Hulu. OK, and this came out May 9th. And Miss Candy McGunry, y'all, all right, this is based on a true story, was a 1980s housewife and mother who did everything, okay? But when the pressure of conformity builds within her, she basically just wants to scream, okay, and get a bit of freedom until somebody is like, shh. And Candy didn't like that baby, and basically it, it ends with, you know, deadly results. And so that is Candy on Hulu, if anybody wants to check that out. All right. And so moving on and on. OK, we are now going to my number five. 
the end game okay you guys this one is on hulu right you can stream the whole series now it originally came on nbc and so this one started february 21st so like i said the whole series is up there and then we have actually an international arms dealer with this one y'all all right a criminal mastermind her name is elena fendora and she basically orchestrates seven simultaneous new york city bank heists all right and so now this principled and relentless agent, you know, Val Turner is basically vowing to take her down. OK, she like, oh, no, girlfriend, you can't get away with that. And she's an outcast from the bureau. OK, Miss Val Turner is. And so she learns that she will have to basically dig up clues from her past and use them in order to help her to catch this person. All right. And again, that is the end game on Hulu. Now we moving on to number six. OK. Number six is the Essex Serpent, okay, on Apple TV. And Apple TV been doing their thing, okay, don't sleep on them. And this started May 13th. And so we have this newly widowed Carter having released, you know what I'm saying, herself from this abusive marriage, relocates to this Victorian London, you know, small village or whatever have you in Essex, okay, and is intrigued by this local superstition of this mythical creature, all right, of course, known as the serpent. And so, you know, we find that the excess creature has recently returned to the area. And the village people is basically like, girl, what are you doing? Because, of course, we always got to have that one nosy person that's like, oh, this intrigues me. You know, let me go ahead and look and try to see if I can find this creature. And the townspeople are looking at her as an outsider, as they should, because she is. And they like, no, girl, mind your damn business. All right. That is basically the synopsis for that, you guys. And so I don't know if any of y'all found that interesting. But again, that is Exit Serpent on Apple TV. Now we moving on along to number seven, Night Sky. OK, this is what my girl, Miss Sissy Spacek, baby. I love her. All right. This would be one of my classics favorites because I have been riding with her since coal miner's daughter, baby. If you know, you know. And so we have J.K. Simmons and Miss Sissy Spacek in this, you know. And they're basically a couple, right, that finds a portal to another planet. And they keep it a secret from everyone, all right, until someone shows up. And so that is Nice Guy, and that is on prom. That just started May 20th. So, hey, if you want to check that out, check it out, all right. So now... My number eight, you guys, is Love, Death, and Robots, Volume 3, okay, on Netflix. This one started May 20th, all right? I don't know how many of y'all's into animation. If you like animation, if you're already watching this, you know, put it in the comments and tell me how you like it if you are. But for those that may not know about this, this is basically a collection of animated short stories. We have all different genres from, you know, fiction, fantasy, horror comedy all right and this is basically you know bringing captivating stories into the life from a unique all right viewing experience and so you guys you may want to go ahead and get into this again that is love all right death robots volume three on netflix all right and then we are moving on down to number nine Okay, number nine, you guys, I have to give a shout out to Miss K and Muchella, all right, who both have YouTube channels and they do something called Hidden Gems along with Nita the Diva, all right. And I found out about these next two I'm about to give y'all my number nine and ten from them. So shout out to them for putting me onto this because I absolutely love these. I am currently watching them. And so number nine, the porter, okay, Muchella talked about this one and it was on BET Plus and it started May 5th. This is inspired by actual events. And anytime I hear actual events, true story, biography, that is another thing that is a plus for me. It automatically makes me intrigued and want to check it out. All right. And so with the porter, we have, you know, um, these two friends that are also porters. OK, their names are Junior and Zeke. All right. And they are basically trying to find, you know, their way. They bond, get stretched to the limits. OK, along with an ensemble of characters 
where they are trying to hustle, all right, conquer their dreams, cross borders, pursue their ambitions, and this is on and off the railway, all right, as they cross North America. And guys, this is really, really good. Like I said, it's a 1920s um era and you know type of piece, and I love those, right? Those intrigue me as well. I love seeing the outfits, the dancing. It's giving me Ma Rainey. It's giving me um. Josephine Baker is giving me Bessie and so for me I like those and if you like stuff like that too I really think you will enjoy this the next one okay came from Miss K and this one is called The Offer and this is actually a biographical drama miniseries all right this is on Paramount Plus and this started April 28th 2022 and this is basically telling the story of Al Ruddy okay he is the award-winning Oscar-winning producer of the Godfather, all right, and it's showing how, you know, he didn't start out in producing, okay, he actually left his job to become a producer, took a chance, and showing the projects he worked on before The Godfather, and how he got to the point of working on The Godfather with, you know, director Francis Ford Coppola, and also the writer of the book by the same name, okay, the Godfather, <laughs> Mario um, Puzo. And it shows, baby, that there was a lot of things, okay, that we did not know about that were never before revealed that they let us into with this one, you guys. And it is gripping. It is captivating. I am stuck on it, okay? I was trying to binge like two from the porter and then two from the offer. Two from the porter, then two from the offer. Because I'm one of those people that I binge and I get through things fast. And I've been really trying to stretch this out because I just don't want it to end. That is how good it is. And so, again, I'm thankful to them for telling me about it so I could get into it. And now I want y'all to get into it, too, all right? And so, basically, we see what this that already went through a lot okay he had the mob after him they was mad that he was trying to put this movie out he even had Frank Sinatra after him because Frank thought that the character Joey Fontaine was supposed to be about him all right and so we now have what I already had on my old school classic favorites but it's kind of falls into honorable mention now because it does coincide with the last one that I was just talking about but I had already wrote this on my list from a couple weeks ago y'all okay because I tend to just you know add things to the list as it comes to me and be like hmm I think I want this to be on my next what you should be watching so it just so happened that it's a coincidence but my first for my old school classic favorite is The Godfather okay I love this movie I watch it all the time I actually still have all three of the VHS tapes, y'all know how those came and how big that box set was. Don't judge me. Yes, I still have mine, okay? And, of course, we know that this is Mario Puzo's, Puzo's powerful Italian-American crime family. You know, we have Don Vito Corleone, of course, that was played by Marlon Brando. And when the Don's youngest son, Michael, who was played by Al Pacino, comes back home, you know, he reluctantly joins the mafia family and becomes involved, all right, into the inevitable cycle of betrayal, all right? And so that is my first one on my old school classic favorite. Next on my old school classic favorite is American Gangster, baby, all right? Get into it, all right, <laughs> with Mr. Denzel Washington, all right? This is him playing Frank Lucas. He played the hell out of this role. This is another one of my favorites. Of course, Frank Lucas rises to power in the corrupt 1970s, all right? In New York, he is equaling and surpassing the notorious mafia families that is within the reach of his empire, all right? And that is definitely an old school classic favorite for me. We are getting into the next one now, all right? The next one on my list is Harlem Nights, all right, with Mr. Eddie Murphy. And this is three generations of comedic genius, all right? Black excellence right here, all right? Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, and Red Fox, you know, in this period piece of the early 1900s. And let me tell y'all, think gangsters, think heroin, think brothels, think tricksters. Put it all together, what do you got? Harlem Nights, baby, all right? That's what you got. So go ahead and get into that one, y'all. And next, I have Mo Better, Mo Better, Mo Better, all right? Mo Better Blues, okay? This, of course, is a Spike Lee joint. It is filmed and centered on the life of a fictional jazz trumpet player, you know, named Be Bleak Gilliam, okay? Bleak! <laughs> that is my movie. I love it, all right? I never get tired of it. I could watch it every single time that it is on. And, of course, we are, you know, looking at all the horrible choices that he makes 
in regard to his life, y'all. And he makes some bad ones, all right? But I still love Bleak, all right? And last but not least, on my old school classic favorite, I'm ending it off with this one because... You know, this was something my mom loved that she used to always watch. We would watch it together. She got me into it. And that is Psycho, y'all. <laughs> okay. Psycho with Norman Bates. All right. Of course, this was a novel by Robert Block, produced by Alfred Hitchcock, and then starring Anthony Perkins. Okay. Not the Bates Motel that used to come on TV, even though I was watching that one too. It was cute. But this is the original Don Dada. Okay. And basically, we know... Of course, that Norman Bates had just got released from the hospital, okay? He got some issues going on, and he got his mama up in the window, or so she's supposed to be watching, and she don't like certain stuff that's happening. We got an embezzler, okay, that is coming over to the hotel, Miss Marion Crane, that is on the run. And, um, you know, after they kind of come into contact with each other, in the aftermath, we end up with a private investigator, you know, Marion's lover coming, her sister coming, looking for her, saying, what's going on? on Marion is missing okay when she went on a run this was the last place that she stopped at and now she has disappeared okay and so they basically are trying to find out what happened to her and they may have found out the hard way all right that is the last one on my old school classic favorite I absolutely love that movie you guys tell me if any of these are your classic old school favorites you know tell me what your other old school classic favorites is I want to hear from y'all right don't be shy put it in the comments let me know if you're watching any of these shows let me know what other shows you're watching tell me what i should be watching okay so i could go ahead and get into it and watch it and if i like it i will definitely talk about it up here and i will give you guys a shout out for recommending it to me all right and so that is my what you should be watching this for today you guys all right and so next time